Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the dip before the rip. Yes, we said it. The positioning still here today relative to what these stocks are doing is still very, very bullish. And we have Fed Jerome Powell right around the corner as well as earnings here in after hours and something very weird that happened over in Canada today that is definitely worth mentioning here in this video. The stock market over there was pretty much shut down for a couple of hours due to a technical error so let's talk about all of this information go over the ortex data with amc gme the s p 500 talk some technicals uh as well as the data that we have coming out tomorrow and where the markets are seeing the next fed rate hike so guys let's get straight into it do your part hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because after all it is free 99 and first things first let's talk about the fed rate monitor tool this is something that i highly suggest everyone use because on a day-to-day -day basis the probabilities for 50 or 75 or 1 percent rate hikes can change and that will move the markets and you are seeing the markets slightly down today we still do have a little bit of, of time left in the markets but this is not uncommon the day before the fed meeting typically you are red the day before the fed meeting as people do you know position for that fed meeting and really start to make their bets and and finalize those bets but for tomorrow's fed meeting you guys gotta understand that even if you didn't make a trade trading the fed here today i, I don't think that is a bad thing the report will come out at 2 p.m. We will know what the Fed's going to be raising rates at that time, depending on what that is and what they have to say. You know, you're probably going to see a big move up or down. But at 2.30, you have the Fed press conference, and that's where you have Fed Jerome Powell coming out. And he's going to say, hey, guys, yeah, our work is long from, you know, finished. We have to keep going hard, you know, 75 basis points, maybe in December. That's going to be a bad thing. If if he says, yeah, we, we're, we've raised a lot. We're getting close to, you know, the point where we can stop raising rates. We're going to go with a 50 basis point rate hike uh, at the December meeting. That's really the difference between an up 2 to 3% day or a down 2 to 3% day. The best case scenario is that the Fed raises 50 basis points and gives a dovish uh, press conference, right? Saying that, you know, we could just raise 50 basis points for a while now and we'll still get to our target and get inflation under control. But like JP Morgan said, that is probably the least likely thing to actually happen. That could spark a 10 to 12% rally tomorrow in the S&P 500 or subsequently coming on Thursday. Now, as far as what the markets are currently pricing in for the December Fed meeting, we are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike. About 52.8% of market participants are betting that is going to be the case. And about 41.5% of market participants are expecting a 50 basis point rate hike. That means that if markets are essentially wrong and the Fed does give us a 50 basis point rate hike, or at least inclination of that 50 basis point rate hike in December, it's probably going to be off to the races for the markets and keep in mind the bank of canada just did this we're essentially you know you know how we're expecting 75 basis points tomorrow the bank of canada just did 50 basis points when the markets were expecting 75 so it's not off the table to actually get that and it's not off the table certainly to get that being you know relayed to the markets for december and i do think that is my base case scenario i do think that is what is going to happen and i think it will spark a massive rally especially in some of the stocks that are shorted into the ground and that's what i'm looking forward to with amc gme and some of the highly shorted stocks that we pay attention to now as far as earnings here and after hours it is going to be a big one amd devon energy and airbnb those are going to be the biggest three and these guys have the ability to move very big especially amd and airbnb airbnb i'm not so bullish on i do have a put trade on them if you guys want access to all of my trades in real time every time i make a trade link down below in the description of this video I'm uh, quite honestly just bear bearish on Airbnb because I've heard a lot of people that I personally know that have Airbnbs. I have one of them and, you know, the bookings are starting to slow down. You're starting to see people, you know, not traveling as much. A lot of people got that itch out of the way. Obviously, there's still people that are traveling, but not to the same capacity as what we've seen in 2021 and the first half of 2022. So I just think the valuation 
is a little bit high if you start to get travelers not traveling as much so there is that if you guys want to see my exact trade link down below in the description of this video nonetheless guys what's actually happening today is really that move before the fed you're also seeing the bond yields which are going down a little bit here today tlt is up 0.59 percent so that is a positive factor of the markets and the dollar is pretty neutral on the day after coming up over really the past four trading days or so you know so it's a positive thing the dollar is not up again but it's not down right it's it's, it's not a tailwind here today it's a pretty neutral factor i would say so um myself but tlt actually being up today is a positive thing and the s p 500 is only down 0.36 percent we were down a lot more at one point we have since retraced some of those losses but we were actually up a lot more on the s p as well we're really struggling to stay above the 100 day moving average we broke out of this one two three days now in a row and the markets are waiting for fed jerome powell a lot of people are saying hey if the powell if the papa powell is hawkish here then you could have a pretty substantial way back down to new 2022 lows uh and you know from these levels around you know 390 a lot of people are looking at that as a decently attractive risk to reward ratio uh for some put positions but I think it's pretty clear to say you're 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 probably going to be very disappointed if you have you know puts heading into Fed Jerome Powell just because we're getting you know close to the end of the tightening cycle the seasonality of the fourth quarter the um Santa Claus rally the midterms like these are all very historically bullish events and I think that's something I don't want to bet against now it does say job opening surge in september despite fed efforts to cool labor market this is also a big reason why the markets are down today it says unemployment openings for the month totaled 10.72 million well above the fact set estimate for um 9.85 million according to september's job openings and labor turnover survey the data indicates that there are 1.9 job openings for every available worker the ism manufacturing index posted a 50.2 uh reading slightly better than the dow jones estimate for 50.0 but 0 0.9 percentage points lower than september so not a lot of positive data at least out of the job report and this is really solidifying that 75 basis point rate hike coming tomorrow because the fed is meeting today and discussing policy and what they want to do uh going ahead so we're going to get a 75 basis point rate hike tomorrow pretty much a certainty after this labor report and you know for december i still do think you're you're only going to get that 50 basis point rate hike i think that is a uh, very logical at this point now as far as amc amc is down about five percent on the day still looking at about a 20 percent short interest the cost to borrow max is jumping up here uh, here today at 29.22%, cost borrow average at 18.5% and cost borrow minimum at 17.13%. So these cost borrow numbers are going up a little bit here today, uh, jumping up about 10% for the cost of borrow max. So I think that is pretty interesting. And as far as the free flow out and loan, that is at 34%. The days to cover sitting at 4.58 and 100% share utilization. If you look at the option activity for the day, you have seen eight orders totaling 160 eighty seven point forty nine thousand dollars positive order value of one hundred percent so i do think that is a very bullish indicator as of right now lots of calls that are being placed on amc and pretty much the same story with gme as well if we go ahead and pull up uh the short activity the estimated short interest of free float is sitting at about twenty one and a half percent the cost of our max at 12 and a half percent and the cost of our average at 11.39 percent so that is still looking very bullish and as far as the option activity you have seen eight orders totaling five hundred and forty five thousand dollars positive order value of 73 percent so again another day of bullish hedge fund positioning and you can see even by november 4th the call the call side for open interest is sitting at 75 percent so again same story with gme and amc looking like by this friday over the next couple of expirations people are very very bullish now if we look at the option activity on the s p 500 give this a second to pull up you will see again 
more positive positioning. About 28 orders, or uh, 28 orders, 2,800 orders placed on the day, totaling about $340 million, positive order value of 79%. So again, you're seeing positive positioning all across the board. And even relative to the bad jobs report that we did get today, there's still too many jobs out there that are unfilled and employers are, are, are not, you know, contracting those jobs away they're not you know taking off their four hire signs or now hiring signs i should say you know so that's a problem for the fed that's a problem for the markets but the fact that you know we we had a bad jobs report today and the markets are still acting relatively strong it's not like you're down two or three percent today you're down less than a half percent i think that is a positive thing in and of itself even after large tech earnings have been pretty bad across the board the markets still continue to move higher that means that there is a lot of people that are short on the sidelines either in cash or just heavily shorted in the markets that need to get somewhat neutral that um you know need to reevaluate their positioning and that's what you will have been seeing actually happen so all in all i think this is a dip before the rip if you take a look at the uh technicals on amc we're still above the lows of 2022 it's been a nice slow and steady move to the upside and really today you're retesting the levels that we've seen just back here october 25th so in the grand scope of things we went up you know tried to trend upwards tried to get close to that 50 day moving average got rejected a little bit now coming down uh, a, a decent amount this is the larger uh, a, a larger red day than i should say in uh quite a few weeks now so that's not necessarily a positive thing but i do think it's a positive thing that we are still holding up so well in this marketplace where really there's 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 no room for uh you know fundamentally flawed businesses let's just call it how it is you know uh there's there's a lot of debt on amc's balance sheet that doesn't have to do with anything with the trade it's just going going to show that amc could be two dollars right now but it's not for a reason pretty much the same story with gme looking a little bit better as far as the moving averages are concerned we came up tested and broke out above all of our major moving averages the 50 100 and 200 day moving averages over the past three days you're still holding above the 50 day moving average but you are pretty far off of at this point a couple dollars uh two three dollars off of your 100 and 200 day moving averages so we'll see what happens with that if we do get that you know rip coming tomorrow from the fed it's probably gonna last through thursday and the rest of the week as well that could be very very bullish if we break out above those moving averages and you're still comfortably above the level that we were trading at around 24 dollars for really the past couple of months now ever since september you're pretty well above that and you can see just a solid trend line to the upside uh going pretty aggressive over the past you know couple of couple of days call it the last week or two it's been a pretty slow and steady uh volatile move if that to the upside over the one two three four five six seven trading days as of right now if you do look at other indicators as well you know those do also look uh pretty bullish as well the macd and the rsi not looking all too shabby so guys that is going to be all for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one